I'm Ignacio Labastida from the University of Barcelona, and I'm going to give this um, webinar in the framework of the Open Educational Week. I would like to thank the Open, the Open Course World Consortium for asking me to give this webinar. Um, this webinar will be in English. Tomorrow we'll have the same webinar in Spanish. Uh, and I would like to say hello to Henry, Igor, and Roberto, and Una, who are here with us. Uh, the topic of the seminar will be good practice in open content licensing. It's not going to be a seminar based on open content licensing because there are some scheduled webinars about uh, open content licensing, especially the Creative Commons license. Uh, I would like to focus more in how to use the open content licensing. In fact, you can see from the first slide, this is a, a, a result of a project that has been financed by the European Union, uh, the project that we are working on these open courseware in Europe. So let's go ahead. The aim of the webinar is first to show which are the current practices in open courseware sites regarding the use of content licenses. As you will see, I'm not just focusing in the site itself, but I will also mention how people mark or put the license in the contents. After looking at the different current practices that we, we can see nowadays in the open courseware site, I will also uh, suggest some basic solutions to improve the use of the license. As we'll see, there is a lot of misunderstanding, misuse, etc. And I think I will, we can have some really easy solutions to improve that and to uh, explain our users what they can do with our contents. And finally, I will suggest, I don't know if any of you is uh, involved in technology, but I will uh, suggest some of the tools that we could improve or create or uh, cre uh, develop to somehow uh, improve the, the use of the marking of the license. As, as you'll see right now, it's not just a problem that we can read or see the license, it's more, more a problem on how the machines can read or see the licenses. Okay, so which are the current practices in open courseware regarding the open content licenses? Uh, this, this part is in fact, as I mentioned before, uh, a work that has been done in the mark in the framework of this open courseware Europe project. It's a report that we call an island is of current practices in Europe. The report that was presented in Barcelona last September, I had a mistake here, September 2012, should say. And in fact, the, the presentation is available at, at our site at opencourseware.eu, and also the report hopefully soon will be there uh, in the final uh, in the final version. What we have seen in this in this project in this uh, report is different aspects. The first, the first aspect is regarding the use of copyright. Nowadays, we still have uh, a look at the open course website and we miss legal notices. We have checked all the European open course websites and we still see that some of them, for uh, just a few, not, not a lot, but just a few, they still have no legal notice. In in fact, that that is a problem because the legal, if there is a lack of legal notice, it means that all the documents are unlikely. Because the the current uh, copyright laws in I could say all the world for most of them, they say that if there is no legal notice, it means 
all right reserved. So if you want to share, if you want to share your open educational resources, you have to mention that. You have to say, these are my resources and this is the way I would like to share. Another thing that we have seen in, in this project is that there is also uh, a difference uh, between the owner of copyright. In some places, there is a mention about the copyright is owned by the authors, so I could say teachers. And in other places, the copyright is assigned to the institution. I could say universities or other higher educational uh, institutions. That's something that it could be not very important, but depending on the license we, we use, it's important to know who owns copyright in order to ask for more permissions. As we're saying right now, most of the people is using a Creative Commons license with uh, some restrictions, for instance, the non-commercial or the shy alike. So if I want to use it commercially, I should know to whom I have to address. Is the author, is the institution? So I need this to be clarified. And finally, we see that uh, there is also uh, a different use to uh, the way the, the copyright policies are used. So uh, sometimes the, there is no copyright policy at all. So it seems that there is no uh, a common information about the or uh, standard use of the license. Sometimes uh, one uh, courses uses one policy and other courses uh, use another policy. So it doesn't seem that there is a, a unique uh, copyright policy in the institution. Regarding the, the second example, I would like to show you, for instance, this is two different legal notices from OpenCourse website. In the first one, they said the copyright is owned by authors and collaborators. And on the second one, it's owned by, uh, in this case, a foundation, a uh, uh, half private, half public foundation at an uh, open university. And, and that, the, that the both, both projects are using the same license, but the difference here is that if I want to use these contents uh, in a commercial way, I should ask in the first example the authors, and on the second one will be the uh, foundation, the one I have to ask. Regarding uh, the license of the sites, we have seen that most of the sites, most of the uh, universities and higher education in Europe are using the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike license. That's the original license that was used uh, by the MIT on the first open coursework. Also, the MIT was using at the beginning a customized license that more or less was the this is a standard license and in fact a few years ago uh, MIT changed to the standard license. However, they still have uh, you could see there is a lot of uh, institutions that have you uh, are using have opted for for a more restrictive license. In this case, the uh, creative commons, no, uh, attribution, non-commercial, non-derivatives. I will discuss later on about this change, but it's important to see that because, in fact, when an institution wants to join the open course world movement, there was no mention about licensing, so they could change the license. I mean, the only the only requirement was to share some of the courses online. This sharing can be seen as, okay, I'm going to put those courses online for free, but I think sharing should mean something else. With the non-derivative works, we have a problem because we need to know to whom I have to ask to adapt these resources to my needs. Another thing that we can see is that Creative Commons license uh, from the beginning were ported to different lights and to different jurisdictions. So sometimes we see that some pro some sites are using the ported versions of the countries of the jurisdictions, 
and in other sites are using the imported versions. Asking to some of these uh, institutions, there is not a real uh, understanding of why they are using one of the other uh, version of the license. It's mainly because sometimes, by default, the platform they're using uh, establish one or the other license. And how, moreover, we can see also the use of the imported license with uh, a translation of the human readable bit. It means the summary, that it's not the real license, can be transla it's translated to any language. So you could, you could, some of the managers of these sites think that having this human readable deed is enough because it, they understood that if the deed is, for instance, in Spanish or in French, the license behind that will be the French or the Spanish license. However, many times the human readable deed is assigned to the imported license. Regarding the version of the license, uh, it's also important to know that uh, the last version of the license, the 3.0, I could say that it's more uh, complete than the uh, oldest versions or the previous versions. Uh, for the version 3.0, there were uh, some changes that improve, I think, importantly, the, the license. So if I, if I had to give an advice to any site or to any, in fact, anyone who could uh, use the a Creative Commons license, I will advise them to use the last version of the license. Finally, another important thing regarding the licensing of the site is how to mark a site. As I, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's, not, it's important not just to make the available the the sign or the image of the license to any human, it's important to mark the site for machines. And that is something that, unfortunately, there is a, an important lack of these markers. Many people are not aware of that, and usually there is not really a, a good marking of the site, but it means that it's difficult for machines to find the site and to uh, find the contents within the site. An example of the first uh, use of the, this non-derivative license could be this institution. It's here in the small, at the, at the bottom, where it's signed the non-commercial non-derivatives. In fact, this open courseware site is using the same license that is used for all the websites of the university. That's something important because it, we have seen this in different um, institutions that if there is like a default, they, the managers of the site, they don't really think about changing this default. So for instance, I, I, I presume the University of uh, Girona, in this case, is using this license by default at the, at the website and they have not changed this default to different contents, for instance, the open courseware. Uh, site. Another example is this, to use the non-derivative works. As I, as I mentioned before, uh, the non-derivative works makes a lot of troubles. I think that uh, as supporters of the open educational movement, we should ask to at least allow derivative works. Um, I'm not going to be to go now into the different license, but there are six licenses from Creative Commons, and two of them, they don't allow, it done, the, the license doesn't allow these, uh, non -der the derivative works, so it means they, they, these, those works cannot be used to make new works, although you have the corresponding authorization, although you ask for permission. I think that uh, open educational uh, movement should ask to uh, get rid of these two licenses for open educational resources, at least to be called open if we understand, understand open for more than uh, just free content online. Another big problem is when this uh, use of the license is mixed. 
in this site, we can see that there is, is the use of the non-commercial share alike, so it means the same license that is used, uh, was used from the beginning in the MIT and other projects. However, when you go into every course, you can see that. I mean, you can see that every course is licensed with the non-commercial, non-derivative work. So at the beginning, when you enter at the site, you think that you're going to have these contents under the shadow-like conditions, so it means you could have derivative words. But once you are inside every of the of the, every course, you see that there is uh, this other license. There is a, a big discussion here because which is the license that really rules the the contents? Uh, I could say that this last license could be understood as the one that rules this course. Also, at the beginning of the of the portal, it's uh, the other license. In fact, this image that was taken in 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 September or in during last summer, uh, I I've been in contact with this university, and what they have done, they have not removed this non-derivative works, what they have really done is remove this shadow-like condition. And in fact, now, if you access to this site, there is a non-commercial, non-derivative um, uh, license. <clears throat> uh, regarding the unported versus ported and the version of the license, I already mentioned that in many cases, there is n no a real uh, thought about why we are using the unported or why you are using the version of the license. Uh, I have to say also that in the Creative Commons movement, uh, the porting of licenses is not really uh, standardized. So I mean that not the lat latest version of the license have all the uh, ported uh, license. So, I could say that in some countries, you cannot really have your own license in the last version because there is not this version available. So there is a mix, but uh, it's, not, it's not a big problem because the, although there are different versions, although there are some small differences with imported and imported, the real meaning of the license is the same. So if we're using the imported or the French or version 2.5 or version 3.0 of non-commercial share alike, for instance, uh, the main importance of the license is the same. So we can still go, go ahead and have the relative works and use these contents for, uh, for everyone. As I mentioned, other things that you can see is, for instance, this version of the license, what, what I said before, the, the deed, the summary of the license, what they what sometimes is called the, what the humans can read and understand. Here is a, there is this version in Danish, but in fact, what is behind this summary, so the license itself, is not the Danish uh, license. In fact, it's the imported license. So sometimes uh, some of the managers of the sites think that having this in their own language, it's, it means that they already have their the license in their own jurisdiction. And this is a misconception that I, I would like to, to show you here because I would like to clarify that what is important is not the summary, what is important is the license itself. And finally, I, I would like to show this, as I mentioned, the licensing marking. Uh, usually we can see this work is licensed under this Creative Commons license or whatever, and usually, uh, people just have uh, put a link to the license here in the icon or in the in the name of the license. Uh, this is a code that I show you here. I'll show you later on how you can get this code. This code with this important part, what they say, rel equals license, is the way you can mark this site and that machines can understand that this mark, this link, means that there is a license. So. Afterwards, you can go, for instance, on machines like search.creativecommons.org and look for Creative Commons content, and then you could find this site. Without this reference, without this rel equals license, 
this site could not be found because this link is not recognized as a license. <clears throat> so, other things that, that it's important to see looking at the licensing marking is that there's still, as I mentioned, sometimes where there is not uh, the license itself or the link to the license or mm, another problem, as I showed you before, there is different license notice. In one side, they give you information about or link to a, a different license and the information that is given, for instance, they explain to you this, doc this content can be used for that or for the other, so the information is different or there is the, the link to one license, but when you go and click, you go to another license. Or the, as, as I show you here, where they say the work is licensed the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Satellite, the icon or the image of the license is not the same that is written in the, in the sentence. Regarding the, the second part of these current practices, you could see like, how to license the content. Uh, licensing a content is where you can find the content with the license itself. Uh, I could say that a high percentage of the open course website that we have studied have some information about the license. It could be correct or not correct, but at least they, they mark or they indicate that they are using a license. However, uh, the majority of the contents that they are in the open course website, they have no license. It means that once, once I download or once I, get, I, I take this content out from the site, I have no information about the license. So if I share that content in another platform or I print it and share it with the students, they will have no information about the license that is used in that content. And as I mentioned before, the lack of information, if there is no information about the license uh, or there is no legal notice, it means all right reserved. So when I share those documents without license, it's like sharing a all right reserved document. Another problem is when there is this incoherence of license or copyright notice. So for instance, I will show you an example right now. Uh, I have an information in the site saying that this content is, uh, is under one license, but once I download the content, the content is marked with another license. That makes a lot of problems because the user is not sure which is the license that rules that content, the one that is in the document or the one that was announced in the site. That's another problem that we've seen because uh, when you use different platforms to access the same document. So for instance, uh, some of the institutions uh, post the contents in the institutional repository and this same content is available through the Open Courseware site. However, in the Open Courseware site, they are using the non-commercial share-alike uh, license, but in the repository, the same document is uh, mark with another license, for instance, the non-commercial non-derivative. The reason that we have this incoherence usually is because in the repository it could be used using the it could be used the non-commercial non-derivative license by default, and there is not this uh, curation about this is a open courseware content. Open courseware content are using other license, so we should change that in the repository. That's another important difference because, because it's not just that we are using different licenses in the platform. The third problem is when once you download that content, if the content has no information at all about the license, you don't know which is the one that rules the content itself. This is one of the examples. This is uh, from an open courseware. It's a book about quantum, quantum chemi chemistry. And here it's written that there is a, th this book is under non-commercial non-derivatives. However, this book that is in PDF format, once you download the PDF, up, sorry, once you download the PDF, you see here that there is the other license, the rec attribution non-commercial share-alike. And also there is an explanation here, this is in Catalan, uh, about the license saying that you are allowed to use 
and to uh, disseminate the document and always uh, acknowledging the author and using for non-commercial and you can uh, make derivative works. So in this case I, I would say the document, uh, the license that rules the document is the la this last one. However, in the previous, in the platform, in the previous indication of the material, it says a different thing. Another example is here where you have the open courseware site with this content, uh, with the license, the non-commercial shareback license. However, once you enter the contents, you see that every web, every page, every web page, is in fact this material is HTML. This material has on the bottom copyright all rights reserved. So if you just go there, in fact, this material are also posted in the department department website. If you go through the department site, it seems that the material are with all right uh, all right reserved. However, once you enter with the to, through the open courseware site, you see all a different uh, situation. So, uh, as conclusions, I could say that uh, what we have seen is that copyright belongs to authors and to institutions. It has there are there are a lot of uh, different ways to approach this copyright. It's not a clear situation even in in the same countries. Same countries have different situations of copyright holding. Um, open courseware sites use usually Creative Commons license, mainly uh, uh, attribution, non-commercial Sharia right. Sharia right. However, there are uh, some uh, institutions that they are not allowing these derivative works by default. Um, there is a lack of license marking, and I think that this is something that must be improved and verified. Um, there is also a need to maintain coherence on license. It's not uh, a good thing to have different legal notice, different license, different links to uh, the same material. And in general, you can see that the contents that are uh, in a, on an open courseware site are not really marked in, in general. So from these current practices that we have seen, I will express some of my suggestions for the best practices on these open content licensing. First of all, I think it's important to define as an institution uh, the copyright policy. It's important to know um, who owns copyright. As I have already mentioned, if you are using these licenses, as it's majority, the, the majority of the institutions do, if you have these uh, restrictions, non-commercial or shy like that also can be seen as, as a restriction or a condition, uh, it's important to know to whom I have to address. Who is going to allow me a commercial use or who is going to allow me to have a derivative work without maintaining the same license? I, I, I emphasize this because I, I, I know that, for instance, the uh, Ministry of Education was using this license and when a publisher contacted them asking for permission for using commercially uh, a content, it was not an open, an open course website, but it was an open educational resource. When this publisher was trying to, to use it commercially and to have a deal or pay for, for this material, the Minister of Education was saying, no, no, this is non-commercial. Well, th this license doesn't mean that the work is not commercial. It means that it's not commercial by default. The problem was that the Ministry of Education wasn't really sure who owned copyright because the material was, in fact, uh, created by teachers. It was uh, school teachers that gave that uh, materials to a, a national repository. And there was no a real policy about copyright. So because they didn't know who owned the copyright, this publisher really could not use that commercially. And that was a pity because the, that material could be going somewhere else, be, being more visible, and being an example of how you can reuse material apart from the, from the license. Another um, thing that you have to think about is to choose a default license. I think it's important here is the 
the tool that is developed in the Creative Commons site, creativecommons.org uh, slash license, where you can really see in a direct way how to choose a license. This is not a register, it's just a, a tool that helps people to decide which is the license that fits you better. I think it's important, as I mentioned, that in the open educational movement, we should uh, foster the use of a uh, license that allow at least these uh, uh, derivative works. Uh, and it's important that uh, for a portal, for an open cultural site, to have a default license. As I will show you in a minute, uh, you could also have some contents that are in a different license, but by default it's important to, to say this is my default license and this is at least the license that I'm going to use. If, if the institution thinks that it's good to have this non-commercial satellite, no problem. And I think it's important that if other uh, educators or teachers want to be more open, uh, the institution should be flexible about that. Third thing that is important to be to take into account is the, to mark the site. It's important to mark the site, and as I mentioned, to mark it fully, not just with the li with the link to the license, but with this realm equal license that they, they will it will mark your site not just uh, for humans, it will be marked for machines. So you will be findable in in the web uh, through the net. Uh, here I suggest this uh, wording, except where otherwise note, content on this site is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike, in this case on ported license. Uh, this this formulation, uh, this except where otherwise note, it's a way to say, okay, I'm going to use this license by default, and I could use other contents in my in my website with different uh, licensing schemes, or even you could also use the uh, all right reserve, and you have to match those different contents with these new specifications. <clears throat> Regarding the the content. Uh, I think it's also important to know that it's not enough to mark content in a human readable way, so having this uh, notice or having the license, it's important when it's possible to fill all the metadata. Metadata is important because when you try to find things, that's the way machines search. It's important to have this machine readable um, format and to maintain the coherence. If the document has a license, we have to inform about that license outside the document, so in the site or in the platform we are using. Uh, here I put this wiki.creativecommons.org slash merkin slash creators, that's a site where uh, give a, a lot of uh, examples on how to mark different formats. Uh, what what I've shown before, the code I was show, showing before, is the code needed for uh, a, a website. But what about PDF? What about uh, uh, images or texts? So there are different ways to f to mark these contents, and it's uh, here in this site in this wiki. There are some good examples. To, to show that. The, the, the problem, and I think here is the, the next step, what I was uh, saying at the beginning, is what we need. What we really need is to, to have a user-friendly license marker. Here in the, in, in the web page I, I shown before, there are some examples, but some of them are not really at, uh, I could say, a common level of use. So some of them require some technical knowledge that is still far away from the common use. So uh, it's not easy to mark some formats. So uh, if we really want to have our contents marked, we should need this uh, friendly mm, tool that could mark any work in any format, and even we could also automatize. Uh, what I what I mean with that is that if I 
take an, an open educational resource, uh, educational resources, I want to make it open, I want to publish somewhere in the in a repository and an open course website, we could embed this marker within the code of the of these um, platforms. And this embedding will allow people to have at the final of the process the content market uh, for machines. Uh, as I as I say many times, uh, I think in our Creative Commons uh, movement we have a lot of lawyers and we need uh, still a lot of technology people. So if you are one of them, uh, you are more than welcome to help with that. And this is the end of the webinar, so I'm ready for questions and comments and suggestions. So please go ahead. Thank you very much. Anyone has questions for Ignacio, you can either press the talk button that's in the upper left hand corner of the screen or you can type it into the chat window. Okay, Ignacio, there's one question that in the chat window about uh, is it possible to license just the content? I, I couldn't understand the question. Sorry. Could you repeat me, please? The question asked in the chat window is, is it possible to license just the content? Um, I'm not really sure if he's referring to just part of the content or um, or what exactly. Well, I, I I I don't understand exactly what what is the meaning of the question, but I could uh, I could say um, that of course you can you can have a, a, a site with all right reserved, but saying that one of the content is uh, with a Creative Commons license or all the way around. So of course there are uh, sites where di there is different. Uh, licensed content, so it's. I mean, it, that's what I was uh, suggesting to have like a default uh, license or legal notice, and then if you have different content with different options, just mention. I don't know if it's that. Uh, it, it was. Um, also suggesting here uh, that yes, this this confusion we we have seen in this uh, in Europe, uh, and I I, I could say I, I'm, I'm talking about Europe because this is the project we we were working on it, but also these same problems I have seen it in other uh, open course websites. Uh, we are now trying to uh, create a, a guidelines in the context of this European project uh, to explain a little bit uh, the last part of this webinar. So to give a, this uh, explanation of best practices, how to mark contents, how to keep this coherence, how to uh, mark the different formats to explain uh, the new users of uh, Open Course Word site, but also the, uh, the uh, uh, current users to improve and to, uh, I could say, uh, change uh, these misunderstandings and misuses of the license that uh, they, they, that will help people to to reuse the content. I think it's uh, it's, it's good to share, but we should share correctly because if as a user I see this uh, mix of information about license, what I'll do is to not use the content because I, I will, I'm not sure this uncertainty about the license uh, will prevent to reuse the content. So I will go to other content or I will go to other places to find a more clear situation.
Okay, if there are no other questions, we want to thank Ignacy for his time and the great presentation. We will have this webinar archived and we will make it available on the Open Education Week site. Okay, thank you very much and happy week.